Hello, YouTube. It's Car Q. A little late on the hot takes this week, but let's get it started. Without wasting any time, the first hot take of the week is the game is actually pretty damn balanced right now. Obviously, it's not perfect and there will always be exceptions, but for the most part, character wise, the game is in a good state. Meanwhile, I think the matchmaking is complete garbage and seems to be getting worse. Okay, from the first part, I think the take isn't actually that hot. I do think the game is not in a terrible balance state. The biggest thing for me for balance is as long as there are no crazy outliers, both at the top and both at the bottom. Last patch with the D.Va being like the clear outlier, that's not balanced, but they've tuned her back a little bit. She still played a lot, but they've nerfed the armor. They nerfed how armor uh, operates, which nerfs all tanks with armor. And uh, they nerfed her actual armor portion. I think she lost like 50 armor or whatnot, right? And they fixed the Juno's uh, speed ring combo a little bit. It's still pretty strong, but like um, I think the acceleration is a little bit slower. So like you still see a lot of D.Va, but not as much. So the top outlier, cut down a bit and I'm seeing a, a lot more Winston's a lot more Ramatra's those are a little on the high end as well in terms of outliers but they're not like extreme extreme outliers like D.Va was I'm still seeing a little Sigma Ryan players still play Ryan I played a little Orisa the other day and I was like you know it's actually not that bad at the top end it's better but not the best it could be for sure uh, on the bottom I still think the bottom outliers need a little bit of work some of them are based on like design they're never going to be viable in every situation they're not generalists but I think uh Mercy actually needs a little help I think she's kind of bad right now. I also still think Juno, according to their stats, she's not overperforming, but I still think she's a little too good. Um, she could probably be dialed back just a slight bit. And then on the bottom end, maybe uh, Mercy to me feels a little bit weak. They did buff Zen this patch. I thought he was the outlier on the weekend, but then um, on the previous patch, but then they buffed his damage, changed his break point. He's like, okay, in some niche situations now. Um, he still gets clapped by like, all the fast dive with speed and Juno and stuff, but like the discord and the it, combined with his uh, buff damage from 48 to 50 helps him four tap in the body for most people now and it used to be five now it's four and then with the headshot and body shot combo you can actually kill people pretty quick so that's pretty good but yeah i think it's like a warm take on the bottom end i honestly don't feel like matchmaking has changed like much at least to me probably because i don't actually like check people's profiles i think if you check people's profiles in every match you're gonna have this warped perception because the way they display your rank versus your actual skill assessment is not accurate and that part confuses people and makes people think the matchmaking is a lot worse than it actually is. Of course, there could be uh, some work done to it, but if you just stop looking at profiles and just play the game and just assess like, is this guy really crushing me because he's really good? Is this one player on my team really that bad? But for the most part, I mean, you're gonna always have games where someone's like re really, really, really overperforming and really, really underperforming. But since ever since I stopped looking at people's profiles, files in their ranks. I don't notice it as much. So it could be like a personal thing. It could be an anecdotal thing. But yeah, matchmaking doesn't seem to be getting worse. It's kind of just felt the same to me. Anyways, let's move on. Hot take. The community is killing Overwatch. The devs can't follow any direction to take the game because players overreact to changes. Now they want the devs to go backwards and consider 6v6 dot dot dot. Players only miss 6v6 because it existed. If Overwatch originally released as Overwatch 2, this 5v5 6v6 debate would not be a thing. The bottom line is kind of like a well duh, but at the top you're saying the over community is killing Overwatch. I've said this before, but it really depends on what community you're listening to and what community you see and which one you're a part of. If you're on Twitter a lot, if you're on Reddit a lot, you'll see a lot of Doom posting. If you're on TikTok, community like TikTok comments, they play a completely different game there. Whenever I do like uh, my patch notes, I release them on all platforms and the comments in every community are completely different. People on YouTube are a lot more seasoned Overwatch 1 veterans and they're like, oh, I they buffed this. They'll be like, they buffed this? They were so weak. And then you go on TikTok and then they're the newer Overwatch 2 casual gamers haven't played the previous ones and they'll be like, what? They buffed it, they were so strong, or they were so the opposite, whatever I just said earlier. The opposite of what I said earlier. I already forgot what I said. You know what I mean? YouTube, they're like, wow, they buffed it, but they were weak. And then on TikTok, they're like, they were so strong. Uh, why do they buff it even more kind of moment? That being said, I don't think it's necessarily a community killing Overwatch. The devs will listen and take a little bit of everything, right? They're not just gonna be like, the community says this, so they're always right. Clearly, they have their direction internally, right? It's driven by statistics. It is partially driven by statistics. It is partially driven by many communities. They've said it, they take into account all different regions and communities. Going back to the community point on platforms, it varies by region. On one of their articles, they said like, they can't just listen to North American. If, if you're like me, I read the English, you know, community, and then they're saying, you know, 6v6, blah, 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 blah. And this hero is really good, this hero is bad. And then they, uh, Overwatch said when they look at the Korean community, 
for example. They have a completely different perception. They play completely different heroes. Different heroes are meta for them. And what they consider weak is not what we consider weak in North America, for example. So good developers will, and I actually think they do try their best to consider all aspects. And because we are part of one, we're very narrow-minded and think what we say is like what they're doing and what they're doing is wrong, blah, 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 blah. I'm kind of like running in circles, but you get what I'm trying to get at, right? Considering 6v6 is not really like going backwards. It's more of like iterating. And at the end of the day, they've said they just want to make a game that people would like to play and enjoy. And if there's enough noise with 6v6, it's less about going backwards or more about partially listening to the community. They had their own internal, like we wanted to do 5v5. Big portion of the community also wanted to say, let's try 6v6 again. The game we've tried 5v5, let's give it a shot. And the devs are like, you know what? It's been two years. All right, let's give it a whirl. I think that's pretty reasonable. And maybe it's because I come from old school RuneScape and you know, people were like, we don't like RuneScape 3 or EOC, bring back old school. And then, you know, they're like, okay, well, let's try it. Maybe have both versions coexist. And so far, so good. The old one is doing better than the new one. Um, maybe the old 6v6 will do better than the 5v5 if it pops off and it's balanced pretty well. And uh, they'll hopefully the devs will be like, yeah, you're right. We're wrong. We tried 5v5. 6v6 seems to be the superior mode. More people like it. And that's the way it's going to go. Maybe both versions can coexist. And we iterate off that live service gaming is all about iteration and you know people's tastes profiles and, and gaming habits and psychology change over time uh, that being said on the last part of psychology of course if overwatch releases overwatch 255 and 66 would not be a debate at all people will always compare to what they have in the past that's like for everything overwatch one release with loot boxes now we don't have them so people are people are always going to compare it to what it used to be that's not really like a point that i feel like is necessary to harp on that just seems like normal not even Overwatch behavior, that's just normal human behavior. When you have something and something new, you always, people just tend to compare. Hot take, Overwatch would be better and more enjoyable as a game if you just removed Mei and Sombra. There's no point in having heroes whose core design is to not let the other players play the game. It doesn't matter if they're strong or not, that's for the elite. For the vast majority of players, metal ranks and quick play, they're just oppressive and don't let you play your character because of freeze or hack. You're not wrong in terms of people being like, I would enjoy the game more if this, 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 this hero didn't exist. And everybody has a different list. May Sombra, maybe Orisa, Mauga, and Roadhog are higher on that list for more people because they're frustrating to play against. And psychologically speaking, playing against things that inhibit your character are not going to be fun and that people's thresholds of that are different getting hacked very annoying can't play for like one and a half seconds can't use your ability you get walled you can't move depending on your hero but then you can also stretch that definition if winston bubbles or ryan puts up the shield and you're a widow i can't shoot anything past it is the Rhine stopping you from playing the game you kind of have to play around and maybe to go for a grapple shot play a different position so like part of this to me sounds a little scary like, I understand frustration, but learning how to play against different, like, variables in gaming is part of learning and part of skill. Like, it's not like they're just suddenly removing full stealth and League of Legends from Evelyn, Shaco, and um, whoever, Twitch or whatever. Like, stealth is a thing. And, like, building, you know, things to stop people from walking. These are things that are maybe unfun for some, but fun for those who play it. And I think in gaming, it's okay to have those. And... As long as they're not super oppressive, you can play around it. People are always disagreeing because like I've said before, I don't think Sombra is like that bad right now. But then people call me elitist because I don't understand how annoying it is to play. But ah, I'm really trying not to be like, it's like, it can be annoying, but you can punish her. Like you can chase her down. It, it can be annoying. No one helps, but like that's part of the learning curve and learning how to play around it. Our, our, is Evelyn OP in League? Are Rogues OP in WoW? There's a lot, th th there's ways to deal with these things. Is Maywall annoying? You just have to like coordinate, break the wall, or like, you know, watch out for it, bait out the wall. There's, there's ways around it. Ah, I don't know, I'm in the middle for this. Okay, interesting take here. The only players who enjoy the games are the exact crowd that make the game unenjoyable for the rest of the community. You'd think a successful video game company would be able to account for shitty players since the only way to play Overwatch is with, go figure, other players, LOL. I, this is a complete hot take. I disagree with this completely. The people who enjoy the game are the people that are not online and like post on the forums. They're the casual people. The game has crazy sticky numbers on Steam. That's the only public information we have. Despite Marvel Rivals, whatever comes out, there's like a subset of the population that just plays casually with their friends on a Friday night, never types anything in, in like, you know, Reddit to complain or whatever, and they're the ones enjoying the game. Are they actually making it unenjoyable for the rest of the community? 
I don't think so. You say you think a successful video game company would be able to account for shitty players, but like every game is gonna have players that are not like at a skill level that you particularly play at. That's like not even just gaming. That's like go play pickup basketball. You're gonna have if you play with random people. You're gonna have someone who doesn't know how to shoot, doesn't know how to dribble. But you're like you're there to have fun. And if you want a more coordinated environment, play with the stack. Play with your five friends. Five stack versus five stack. And then are you really gonna call your friend a shitty player? Well, that's that's at your discretion. But you know what I mean? Like the players who enjoy the game are the people who aren't online. That's the takeaway for me, at least. When you're queuing randomly with people, you're going to have some shitty teammates. And a hot take, I think the people who always complain that they have shitty teammates are probably the shitty teammate themselves. I'm just gonna say it. Hot take, as annoying as high mobility heroes are, like Doomfist, Tracer, Genji, Mercy can be, uh, to some people, those are the characters that define Overwatch as a game in my mind. I agree. I think Overwatch is such a dynamic FPS that like high mobility is welcomed and very fun to play with. Super rewarding because you get really high highs when you coordinate like a crazy Tracer Genji Doom dive on the right, uh, right person. Completely different from Valorant where you have to stand still static movements for the most part minus Jet and... Uh, whatever the zappy girl's name is neon but like having like that high high skill ceiling movement is kind of what makes overwatch overwatch and like you said it can be annoying to some people but i think um that's part of the charm of the game is like you know it can be always annoying to die and be like oh my god where'd they come from because you play a lot of a, a slower character but i think that's the charm of overwatch we have so many different archetypes you can play high mobility or you can play a little slower more immobile ones that have strengths in different ways so um yeah no i don't i don't think this is a hot take this is uh these these characters definitely are a big part of overwatch's di identity and define it hot take sombra ruined overwatch 2 more than 5v5 there are so many sombra complaints i still think this rework is so much better than the stealth where like you drop the translocator and like you just teleport across the map back to a health pack that play style was so much cheesier because you just can't punish her as well maybe she wasn't able to assassinate you as quick without virus but she was way safer and way more annoying to play against in my opinion simply because now her translocator is limited and you can punish her you just have to shoot her back a little bit and she'll throw a bad translocator. Maybe she gets away sometimes, but the risk is way higher. The reward is higher, but the risk is higher. So if people aren't like capitalizing on the risk, of course, like people are getting camped in metal ranks and getting smoked, but they've nerfed virus two, three times thanks to, um, you know, some like, I'm not saying it's a, like, it's not oppressive to play against, but you know, it's been, it's been uh, a, a big complaint how she's very like annoying to deal with, with virus and they've nerfed it. The impact damage has been cut by 10. The damage over time has been cut by 25. It's way weaker than it was pre-season nine after the HP pool changes. Um, you have to respond. Like that's one of the ways to play around it. And like, that's part of the, the learning curve. That's, that's all I'm gonna say. Hot take, if you're a competitive player, you should hold your expectations about your teammates, especially in lower ranks, they will make mistakes. And it's up to you to take this in consideration when planning your moves. Hey, this is reasonable. This is not a hot take at all. You have to manage your expectations. If you're in gold and you watch a lot of high level gameplay and you're like, I think this is how it's supposed to be done and you get mad at your teammates because they're not doing it. You guys are in freaking gold, man. They're not all going to be able to know how to do this technique. Let's say you, you watch NBA basketball. Here's my another analogy, right? And you see they do this perfect pick and roll, roll to the basket, alley-oop dunk. And you're like, I want to perform this play at the local YMCA. That shit's not going to happen, dude. Manage your expectations. And that's going to be part of making the game more uh, enjoyable for you. People are gonna make some dumb moves and you're gonna get away with like crazy open layups in your local Y, same in gold. You can just do more funkier things. And if they don't do it, you you can't be like that mad and you know, they will make mistakes, right? Manage your expectations here while planning your moves. Things will not always go smoothly. It can be annoying, but like, don't even lose any sleep over it and go on Reddit to complain that this teammate, my gold teammates are holding me back because I'm better. Adapt. Adaptation is a skill. Hot take, Lifeweaver is the worst designed hero ever added. His VA slash personality is very one note and kind of awkward and his kit is just heal stats the character. I hate how his abilities feel during combat. His heal is sluggish and his grip is frustrating to play against and frustrating to play with. Judging by the way Blizzard has tried to balance him, it's clear they don't know what to do with him either. They just throw more stats at him. They should delay the next support hero after Juno and just rework him from top to bottom instead. I think this is a pretty hot take. I don't agree with this. I don't think Lifeweaver is as terrible of a design as uh, Mauga personally. In terms of like 
him blizzard just throwing stats at him with balance and they didn't know what to do i agree with that for a while that's what they did but i think now they're finally adapting to like the way the kit flows a little bit with how the peel passively charges so you can actually throw your thorns out now a little bit more to incentivize a more dynamic playstyle to actually shoot instead of just padding heals. Life Weaver actually offers pretty reasonable shield break, one of the best on the support lineup, if the target isn't moving. Obviously the weakness of Life Weaver is like shooting tracers because your projectiles are kind of slow. They blink around, none of that shit's hitting. But if they have a stationary Sigma shield, or stationary like Winston bubble. You can actually pressure that quite a bit, and that's like an underrated part of his uh, his abilities. Um, right now, the pedal platform doesn't expire if you take it really quickly and jump off, so there's actually more use cases with it. I can agree that Life Weaver's uh, life grip can be annoying to play against and with, but like that's his design. He's a more defensive-oriented character. You can't have too many homogenous characters, and I think his design was very unique compared to anything else, and Overwatch is a game uh, where everything should be, you know, there's a lot of different heroes with different styles and accessibility points and skill floors. And I think he fits that that kind of like category with a specific subset of people that really love Weaver. The majority of FPS competitive gamers will naturally gravitate to the, your Widowmakers, your Ashes, your Soldiers, uh, your heroes that can like boom, 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 be proactive and shoot stuff. Ana, Bap, Ilari, but more defensive oriented heroes, they may not just be your jam, but they are the jam for some uh, individuals who like them. And as long as they're not like terrible outliers where they're either really weak or really strong and I th with a lower floor, I think that's okay. And I think right now his state is okay. By design, he doesn't need a rework. He's never gonna be hard meta in my opinion, unless his stats get padded even more. Um, he's a hero that's always gonna have a pretty low variance in terms of his win rate and lose rate. He's not terrible, but he's not like gonna have a big swing if you're like more skilled on Weaver, in my opinion, because I think those are left for heroes that are more proactive and have proactive abilities. Life Weaver is a reactionary character. You wait for somebody to be in danger, then you grip them. You wait for them to be in danger, then you throw the Tree of Life as a response to people versus like an initiation ability like Juno's ultimate, like Kitsune Rush, like Ana's Nano Boost. Those things have a higher like win rate to like win a team fight and win a game if it comes down to it and you're not missing your shots and you pick the right time to use it versus weaver who's a bit you know but like if you mess up those like proactive ultimates you can actually lose a lot more so the range of winning and losing is higher for proactive heroes but heroes like weaver who are more defensive oriented are going to be hovering squished more and i you know this might not this might be just my personal analysis but whenever i see people try unranked to gms on like weaver or or, or mercy it takes them a lot longer despite being a very skilled player uh, compared to the more proactive heroes because it's hard to be as proactive on the, based on their design. That's just how it goes. He's fun for those who like him and he's not meta for anybody. Uh, he's not meta and he's just, you know, you see them occasionally, I think it's okay. Underrated take. All the takes we've seen featured in Karki's video just teaches us to think twice about what we say. Apply Socratic method on our own takes before we make a fool of ourselves for everyone to see by talking out of our ass. I mean, like some of these takes are a little hot. I don't like, I actually have a lot of them. I partially agree, but like the take, a lot of these takes are very emotionally charged. Like you probably just lost a game or you're frustrated by this thing. And then you kind of throw out all the rationality out the window and you just want to dial in on this one single point without accounting for the broader perspective. And all I'm trying to do is just offer that a little bit. I'm not glad, I feel, am I really that mean when I look at these takes? I feel like I'm, I'm trying not to be. Like some of them are like, okay, but like I can see your point, but like really I don't, but I'm trying to put it nicely. Anyways, that's just, <laughs> that's, these are, these have been fun though. So hopefully you enjoyed listening to a more, uh, somewhat neutral stance. I'm not very, very heavily strung out on like certain opinions for the most part. I'll do one more hot take. Overwatch is more fun when balanced around the general player base rather than the pros who probably should just have their own rule sets. That doesn't exist in any game, like having two separate balances for like separate player bases. I don't think that's the right way to do it. There's a middle ground where like you can make a design a hero or tweak things where it's more comfortable for your average player, but also not oppressive and like still reasonable for the high end. That's just a little hard to find depending on how their design usually uh, is based off of. That being said, they sometimes balance top top down but not always in fact i actually think the devs do a pretty reasonable job when you take a step back and look how they're doing things they're trying to account for both bases uh the balance for both bases they're literally nerfing sombra's virus damage twice and she wasn't like she was annoying but like 
that was to like appease your average player who's getting blasted by her. And then they and then on the flip side, they're nerfing Diva, which at the high end feels really oppressive. And they nerf Diva because of the Juno speed ring and blah blah blah. But then like they look at the stats and they're like, well, your average player actually like that isn't like diva isn't actually overperforming at all when you look at the stats so they're trying to consider both ends they still nerfed her because high-end players are complaining but like realistically on the back end they're like well it looks like these people actually struggle with her that goes for sojourn too when they like um nerfed sojourn or whatever people were like oh she's still like really good but then the high end's like oh she's like terrible then they buff the smg portion and you know, I do think they go in a lot more directions than you think, and people just like to dial in on that one patch where they did something that they didn't like, and that's the case. But if you take a step back and just look at the balance history of individual heroes, honestly tell me if they're really appeasing the high, uh, the pros or are they appeasing the general player base. I'd bet that it's a lot more varied than you think. All right, and that's it for this week's Hot Takes. Thanks for listening. See you guys next week. Bye-bye.